Welcome to Making Contact Lens Compliance Stick. Thanks for joining us this evening. My name is Bill Rindell, and I'm the 2022 chair of the CLI board. I'm also the executive director of medical affairs at Bausch and & Lomb. And I'm Michelle Andrews, vice president of professional and government affairs at Cooper Vision. In addition to Bausch and & Lomb and Cooper Vision, the CLI board also includes our colleagues from Alcon and Johnson & Johnson Vision. For those of you that might not be familiar with CLI, CLI is a US industry association for soft contact lenses. We're committed to advance the latest innovations in safe and effective contact lens and lens care products, as well as services. The CLI has particular focus on healthy wear and care and encouraging the growth of the contact lens fitting. We're also committed to help the eye care community evolve uh, to meet needs of the patients especially as current and prospective patient attitudes and behaviors change. As part of our work this year, we've named 13 CLI visionaries who share CLI's outlook and will help share ideas and practices to advance these causes. We're joined by some of them this evening. So I'd like to introduce you to Dr. Chris Levens. He is the Chief of Internal Clinics and Professor at Southern College of Optometry. He's an industry consultant and researcher with published works on eye disease, contact lens solutions, and optometric management. So Dr. Levens, you're gonna get us started this evening. Um, why don't you share with us what you believe to be the biggest obstacles in compliance with our contact lens wearers? Sure thing, Michelle. So the, the first thing that comes to mind is the volume. You know, of all the research in the last 40 years, it stayed pretty much the same, although it's a pretty wide number. But the reports are anywhere between 41% and 90% of people are not compliant. So the first, thing that, the first thing is compliance with doctor and manufacturer recommendations. That has to be there. And then all the rest, like replacement schedule, cleaning and disinfection, lens handling, hand washing, and just overall water exposure are all big things that, that I think are relevant. That's great. Thank you. Bridget Shen Lee is the co-founder of Vision Optique in Houston and lectures internationally on digital eye health, dry eye disease, anti-aging eye care, healthcare social media, and ocular aesthetics. She serves as the Tear Film and Ocular Surface Society Global Ambassador and Medical Advisor to the Vision Council. Dr. Shen Lee, what do you think the biggest obstacles to contact lens compliance are? Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we have a very busy primary eye care practice in Houston. So for our established patients, the obstacle's really not bad. Uh, the obstacle comes with brand new patients that we're putting them into contact lens. When we ask them to wash their hands, that's fine. But when we start sharing our 3S rule, uh, with contact lens safety compliance, they are just like, wait, but I've always been doing things like this. So our rule is actually very simple. Do not sleep, swim, or shower in your contact lens. We'll discuss more in details later. That's great. Thanks, Bridget. Dr. Mark Schaefer serves as the clinical field manager at My Eye Doctor in Birmingham, Alabama, with a focus on ocular disease and contact lenses. He's a moderator for I2BOD and founding member of the Intrepid Eye Society. So Dr. Schaefer, it's your turn. What are the biggest obstacles in contact lens compliance? Well, I wanna say thank you for everybody for being here and thanks again for having us all on here. I'm gonna turn the lens around. Um, honestly, like we've done this to ourselves. Um, I think optometry as a whole, like if you think about all of the contact lens advancements, we're looking for longer wear time, better, you know, wet ability, better oxygen transmissibility, all of these factors that our patients are, are clamoring for make the lens way more comfortable beyond that first day, that day 30. So we've created this monster ourselves by creating these cutting edge technologies that our patients don't see the value of throwing away the lenses on time. So it's something that we have created because we have such amazing technology. So it is a great problem to have that we have lenses that are comfortable and provide vision for our patients beyond what is FDA approved. Dr. Jason Tu is a partner with Envision Optometry in San Diego. He's a past president of both the California Optometric Association 
and the San Diego County Optometric Society. He's also an industry consultant. So Dr. Tu, what do you feel are the biggest obstacles in compliance with our contact lens patients? Everybody, thanks for having me. Excuse my voice, I'm going through something right now. Um, you know, one of the things that uh, we focus on our clinic is um, to try to make things as simple as possible for the patient and not complicate things. So I spend all my time when I'm talking to a patient, just telling them two or three things to digest and to make it as simple as possible. Because when they leave, they're not gonna remember anything unless you make it really, really simple and straight to the point. That's great. Thank you, everyone. The great insights to get us started this evening. Well, the Easy Way initiative was created in late 2020 in response to greater attention being paid to eye health by the general public. This was an upside of a focus on hand hygiene and overall health arising from the pandemic. Feedback we received told us that while there are multiple potential barriers to healthy wear and care, one common thread was ensuring that instructions from the eye care community be simple and memorable. CLI tested the easy ways three steps, which we'll share in a moment, with a national consumer panel. The steps were found to be easy to understand and easy to recall, putting us two steps closer to encouraging the right behaviors among wearers. The easy ways three steps to healthy, comfortable contact lens wear are think clean, remember freshers better, trust your eye doctor. Now each memorable step has additional items to share with the various types of contact lens wearers. We've created multiple educational tools for practices to use with their wearers. These include animations, a video, social media tools, a feature story for your website or to use with your local media and more. All are available free and you can download them at easywayprogram.org. Now I appreciate that Bill, thank you. So you've heard from our panelists an initial summary of some of the most concerning elements around compliance in our patients who wear contact lenses. We've heard about simplicity and the need to make it memorable. So patients leave, they remember what, what we told them. We've heard that the contact lens products themselves are great and there's a, a large volume of contact lens patients in our practice. And so all of these things coming together, the needs that we have and the volume of patients really you know, elevate this in our day-to-day -day lives. And so what I'd like to do is, is shift our focus away from uh, the challenges that we've identified and really start to talk through how we overcome those challenges. Uh, Dr. Levens, I'm going to come back to you in just a moment, but before I do that, I'd like to remind all of our attendees tonight that we want to hear from you on this topic as well. So as we go throughout the evening, if you can share your questions or ideas that you have for overcoming some of these challenges in your practice, you can put those in the Q&A and we will work to address them throughout the evening. All right, Dr. Levens. So um, you gave us some, some ideas on what you feel the, the biggest challenges are. How are you working to improve compliance in your clinic? I through a four-step approach. So it's not a lot, but there are actually some behaviors here that until it really came to mind to really try to combat non-compliance, it's not, though it's all common sense, it's not always front of mind. So in no particular order, patient education, I think, is the hallmark. And it's actually not just in verbal form, and it's not just for our new wearers. The established wearers need to hear it again and again and again. And they also, if you really wanna deliver a take home message, it has to be in verbal form as well. Given that most adults forget 50% of just what was said within five minutes after hearing it. So that's the opposite of retention. Um, ECP involvement, I think is really critical. Patients are coming to us for our expertise. And so we need to emphasize compliance and not just leave the dissemination of all these topics to our technicians. It needs to at least in part come from us or be emphasized by us. Uh, safe care regimens. 
We do know that daily disposable contacts have the greatest opportunity for compliance, but they also have to be replaced on time. And folks need to wash their hands. 60% of the time, they're not doing it well. And it's actually more problematic on lens removal than it is hand washing prior to insertion. So they have to wash their hands both times of the day. And it's just as important with RGPs as it is for SCLs. Uh, ECP compliance. ECPs through the literature, actual multiple studies have found that we often are, report, are delivering inconsistent messaging that actually is not adherent to manufacturer guidelines. So at a minimum, we have to stop that and deliver replacement schedules that, and cleaning schedules that adhere to, uh, to appropriate guidelines. And finally, we need to keep researching it and keep monitoring this so we see if these small endeavors actually are getting at the crux of it and making a difference. You know, Chris, you brought up um, education and you brought up the importance of both verbal education as well as written education and the combination of both and it coming from multiple uh, voices in the practice. There was some research presented um, just this month in um, OVS around what percentage of patients when they get something written actually read it when they get home. And it's, it's, the numbers are like 60% of people actually pick that back up again and read it. So um, two questions really. First, do you have a sense of, of what's happening in your practice with regard to the things that you're giving to your patients? And have you tried other, other ways to reach them or other ways to get them to look at the material that you, that you have available to them besides something that they take home? Yeah, I, I, think it's a, I think it's an appropriate question because we see the trash bins full of stuff we just gave them to. So it's, it's certainly re relevant. Um, so there's going to be some people that still appreciate paper. I like to read on paper. There's going to be some patients that lead to would prefer to read in electronic means. So a text message may be more applicable to them. So either we do it in multiple different channels or we try to do our due diligence to try to decipher which patients we predict will resonate through which optimal channel? Any, any other of our uh, panelists have any input on how they've made modifications in their practice to increase the likelihood that your patients will, will read the information that you've put together for them? I'll go ahead and jump in. Uh, what we have learned is that patients do read their emails. So we do a lot of communication via email, especially if it's a brand new contact lens wear, and we send them to our YouTube channel. Uh, this is typically referring to pediatric new contact lens wear. We have videos for both uh, typical soft contact lens and for our ortho K contact lens patients. So patients receive both uh, emails and links within the email, there's a link to the YouTube videos and the body of the email, we've kept it very simple, the steps. It's basically a quick review of what we discussed during the teaching procedure. Yeah, video is, is very popular these days. And, and I understand that even subtitling videos enable people to watch them in environments where they might not, not necessarily be able to have the sound going. So there's lots of ways to try to increase that uh, open rate and also increase the chance that people will go through and read the material as well. Um, Dr. Schaefer, I'm, I'm going to um, look to you next on some of the things, if you could share with our audience what you've been doing to address some of the, the concerns you, you have in your practice around noncompliance. Yeah, thank you. I will say to Chris's and Bridget's point earlier about chances you know like we have patients that still come back and pick up their supply of contact lenses and there is another opportunity for us to leave information with them so not only included in your supply of contact lenses here is more information about them so i think we have a lot of unseen opportunities that we may not think about that can provide that education because at the eye exam you know one of the things that i like to think about is that we get like 20 to 30 minutes, if we're lucky, of FaceTime that's going to affect a year of their vision, right? How they interact with their daily life for 365 days, if we are lucky and they come back in a year. So having that mindset, it's, okay, what's going to give the most impact to the patient? And I think for our existing patients, it's hammering 
and continuing to ask the questions about compliance. You know, I don't think it's, are you throwing away your lenses on time? I think it's more of a, how often do you throw away your contact lenses? So now they have to think about it. And then asking them why. I think it's a simple question that doesn't require a lot that gets them thinking. Like, is it a laziness thing? Is it a, I don't want to, is it a, I don't think about it. I have five kids and I just don't have the time to remember that today is March the 3rd, unless it came up on my calendar. So how do we create easy and simple, repeatable, but also continuing to to harp on why it's important. So I think educating on the why this is important. So, you know, we don't want to see them. I love seeing my patients, but I don't want to see them for preventable red eyes, right? Preventable ulcers and inflammations and leading them down a path of contact lens dropout if they do overwear their lenses and end up in a situation where they can't. For our new wearers, it is, again, reminding them why it's important. Going through, this is exactly how you should do. And it starts with the staff, it continues with you. And again, it's beyond that afterwards. So it's a three-stage process. The more information they hear consistently, the better that is going to resonate with them. So if they hear 20 different things, it's going to affect how well they're gonna take care of their lenses and then they're gonna end up Googling it anyway. So, you know, we have compliant patients, we have non-compliant patients thanking your patients for being compliant, right? Like, thank you so much for doing what we asked you to do is another way to just show gratitude for this, for them taking care of their lenses. You know, there's some statistics that show that even daily disposables, 80% are compliant, which is mind blowing to me that 20% of patients in dailies rewear their lenses, but it's because they think they can wear them again. And that's our fault for not saying, well, you have to throw these away every day. So taking that few extra moments to just really explain the importance of it. Um, I think when I get a patient who has overworn their lenses and been doing it for 15 years and they're a new patient to me, they always tell me that I've been doing this for years and I'm fine. And my favorite thing to say to them is, listen, you can speed on an interstate without a seatbelt and be fine. But the moment you have a problem it is going to be infinitely worse than if you were taking care of it. And that's what I'm here to do. I'm here to take care of a lifetime of vision. Whether you see me once or see me every year for 50 years, my job is to take care of your vision forever. And this is going to help reduce the risk that you're going to have issues. Yeah, Mark, you touched on a, a couple really great points there. And we're, we're seeing some, some chatter in the, in the chat around a great idea about thanking our patients and, and encouraging the right behaviors that we want to see. So I see that as a, as a take home for, um, for perhaps more than one tonight. But another thing that you hit on that I really think is important is developing the habit of asking open-ended questions, you know, particularly in a busy day. We've already heard about volumes of, of contact lens patients and volumes of patients in general. It's, it's very easy to be presumptive and ask some fairly closed-ended questions, right? Are you having any problems? Is everything okay? And, and asking the questions that evoke an answer, first of all, gives us much more information, but also helps them think through the conversation and actually create a dialogue around contact lens compliance. And instead of rushing through with the assumption that well, if, if my doctor didn't say anything, it must, it must all be okay. And I, so I think that's important, not just for contact lens compliance, but certainly for compliance and just really understanding what our patients are going through in, in everything that, that they do in the way we ask questions. So I appreciate that. Dr. Tu, I'm sure you have some, some, some words of wisdom to add to this conversation about what you're doing in your practice to help overcome some of these issues around non-compliance. Give me one second. Hopefully this helps. Anyways, um, like I mentioned earlier in our practice, we, the, the whole point of the game of contact lenses is keep it simple. And from the people who check in our patients at the front and provide coffee, to the technicians who work up the patient, to the opticians who check them out and order their year supply, they're all trained and told the same things. So whenever we have a patient, a contact lens patient, doesn't matter if you've been seeing me for 15, 20 years, or this is the first time you see me, the first time in contact lenses, we all tell them the same exact thing. 
When I'm done with the exam, I go, okay, so let's go over best practices for contact lenses. Two things I want you to keep in mind. First, you wanna maximize oxygen. Second, we wanna wear a sterile medical device. It is a medical device sitting on your eyeball. So it needs to be sterile. So how do we do this? First, when you get home from work and you're done with your day, you take those things out. Clean them, rinse them, soak them overnight, or if it's a daily disposal, just throw it away. That's how you maximize your oxygen from that moment to the moment you go to bed. What you don't want to tell your patients is take them out before bedtime because half of them don't remember to because they're so, like Mark said, they're so comfortable nowadays. We made them so damn comfortable. And now they're just going to sleep and completely forgetting about it. How many of you guys have had issues with glaucoma patients being compliant with their drops? Because we're telling them, hey, use this in the morning and this right before bed. But when they're in bed, I don't know about you guys, but I'm half asleep. And my wife tells me the minute my head hits that pillow, it's like one minute and I'm snoring. So I'm not putting in drops. I'm not remembering to take out contact. So as soon as you're done with day, that's how we maximize oxygen. And this is why we're always prescribing you the latest generation of material that breeds a lot of oxygen. The second part is driving home the point that these are medical devices sitting on your eyeball. Daily disposable is fairly, fairly straightforward. But like Mark said, there's still like 15, 20% of those people out there who wear them more than that. The two, the two weak lens, I tell them, I don't care what other methodology you're using, unless you're really in a retentive patient, I get it, I'll trust you. But if you're not, it's every first and 15th of the month. Keep it simple. Don't think, first and 15th. If it's a monthly lens, it's every first of the month. I don't want you to look at a date. I don't want you to go, oh, today's the third, so I'll replace the April 3rd. Because April 6th is gonna come around and then pretty soon you'll be like, okay, I'm gonna shoot for May 6th. And pretty soon you've lost track and you're sitting there thinking, I'll just wear it until it feels dirty. And then now you're down that hole. And the thing is, if you, if you follow these simple, simple instructions, we will get to know each other over 10, 15 years. I don't wanna to get to know you really well over one year because you keep coming back here for complications or infections. Every single person in the practice knows this message. So I, I really wanna talk a little bit more, Dr. Tu, about the consistency piece. So you, you started with consistency of message, simplicity and consistency, and you ended with that. How in your practice do you help get a consistent message delivered from every member of your staff? We have staff meetings. Um, I've got, I used to have a staff of about four or five and staff meetings were basically me just like, hey, come in the office for a second. I need to tell you guys about something. I need to train on something. Now we've got a staff of 28. So we actually have to have sit down meetings and we have to go over these things. And not only do we do it as a whole staff of all 28 people and disseminate the message, we then follow that up with the next week or two of going into each department and, and reinforcing the message. So at some point, everyone gets it. The problem is when you have uh, new employees come in, you gotta remember to onboard them to the same message. That's the part where we could do better. Yeah, it is It is ongoing effort for sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Dr. Shen Lee, what would you like to share about the efforts you've taken in your practice with regard to contact lens compliance? I um, agree with uh, all the doctors, uh, what they have brought up. They're all great points. Um, so for my practice, um, it's busy and I like simplicity, things that both the staff and the patients can remember. So, and I like uh, three, no more than three bullet points. So it's three very simple rules, two always and one never. So number one, always wash your hands before you touch your contact lens. So Anytime, it doesn't matter what they plan to do, whether put them on, take them off, or maybe eyelash got in the eye or something's bothering them. So we teach patients, always wash your hands before you touch your contact lens. Number two, I call it the three S rule. Do not sleep, swim, shower in that order. Do not sleep, swim, shower in your contact lens at all. So we just make it an absolute rule. And number three kind of brings it back. It's a never rule. Never mix water with your soft contact lens. And for my pediatric patients, I actually have them repeat it back to me. So remember the three rules, what are they? So make the kids repeat it. And sometimes for the adults, especially if uh, 
they're not that compliant and we know they're not because of all the questions that we ask them. So I have them repeat back to me, what are the three rules when it comes to contact lens safety? So my practice will actually call it contact lens safety rules. So that all the staff, all the patients, the patients may not follow it, but they know what they are. And if they don't, I make them learn it, have them say it out loud. And you just, you know, you, you sometimes you just have to like be patient. I wait with a smile on my face and they know they're guilty. So, okay, okay, I won't do it. But I was just working out in the middle of the day and I don't want to take on my contact lens. <laughs> But at least they know what the rules are. And what really helps with patient's compliance is that we prescribe premium daily disposable contact lens to almost every single patient if it's within the prescription range. So as a whole, the daily disposable penetration at my practice is uh, almost 87%. So that helps. Bridget, you brought up different age groups. Um, you brought up your pediatric patients and contact lenses. You talked about your adult patients and contact lenses and how um, some things are the same and maybe some things are a little bit different between those two groups. I'm interested to hear from other panelists, do you, how you approach different uh, people in their contact lens wear. Are there different ways that you educate them based on their age or experience with contact lenses? I'd, I'd love to hear from you on what suggestions you have for uh, different age groups in your patients? Well, I really try to go after the people who are long-term wearers with more emphasis, presuming that those who are early into contacts tend to be the most compliant right away because they're nervous about their eyes. But after a while, patients who have not had complications yet tend to be lulled into complacency. Oh, well, it's never gonna happen to me because it hasn't happened yet. And I try to spend most uh, an extra amount of time with them to try to emphasize that just because it didn't happen yesterday does not mean it's not happening tomorrow and remind them of what we taught them on the day of their first fit again. Yeah, it, it ties back to uh, what uh, Mark said about that, that driving in the car on the road, right? You, you can, it doesn't always happen, but when it does, it can, it can go horribly wrong. And so that's a great reminder. Um, any other insights on that question? Because I, of course, we have we have lots more. Yeah, I I do. Um, I honestly like I forgot to mention this, but one thing that's really important when you're connecting with these patients is like connect with empathy, right? Like connecting with them. Like, yeah, you've you've made mistakes. You didn't throw away your lenses on time. Like, let's let's just move forward. Um, in my younger years, I know I look like the youngest that I just, you know, graduated from optometry school out of, you know, Dr. Levens, Chris actually was my faculty advisor at Southern College of Optometry. Mark, um, you, are, you are, and you just did. Yeah, I know. It's fine. I got it. Somebody has to be. But in my younger years, I was a little more, abra not abrasive, but just a little bit more stern in my lectures to patients about overwearing their contact lenses. And I've kind of eased up. And I think it's the pandemic that just kind of made me say, hey, listen, everybody's going through their own stuff right now. Let's just, the past is the past. The future is going to be better. And let's move forward and just be like, listen, it's cool. I get it. You know, like there's a reason you did it, whether it's negligence or, you know, you just didn't want to, that's cool. But moving forward, this is how we're going to do it. So, and I think it's important to just, again, continue to have this conversation every single time. With kids, with our pediatric patients, I do think it's important to have the conversation to both parent and child and kind of say, I need both of you on the same page because kid is probably going to do whatever the kid wants to do and the parent is going to be the one that is enforcing this. So how do we help create those positive conversations and positive moments in order for them to continue to maintain that behavior time and time again? Yeah, yeah, you know, it's so important to, you know, you talked earlier about reinforcing what their, what your patients are doing right with a thank you and that broader understanding of there's lots of things going on in everyone's life. Um, how you've modified that over time. I think that's great. Thank you for sharing. But both of both Dr. Levens and Dr. Schaefer, you, you, you bring up this um, kind of general theme of there are times in people's contact lens wearing experience or perhaps times in their lives where they're 
more focused on, on the behaviors that we're looking for and, and less focused. And I think about what we just went through uh, with the pandemic. And there's data showing that at least at the earliest stages in the pandemic, we had a consumer uh, group or population that was very high sensitivity to health and wellness and a lot of hand washing. And, and my question is, are we seeing those behaviors carry through? Or are we starting to see, as, as Dr. Levin said, you know, you kind of made it through that and now we're, we're maybe back to where we were pre-pandemic. So I'm, I'm curious as to what you're seeing in your practice in, in, did we lose some of that attention to health and wellness, those behaviors, or are they sticking around? And, and how are you working with your patients in that capacity? Well, in our, in our practice, we definitely have seen a drop off in compliance. Um, now there were, you know, kind of post pandemic, um, kind of people are relaxing a little bit. We, we've definitely seen the drop off there. How are you, how are you seeing it in the practice, Dr. Tu? Is, are you seeing complications or when you talk to your patients, are they disclosing things that you would prefer you didn't hear? Yeah, it's a combination of both. And the thing is also, you know, they can say all they want, but when you look at the chart and you're saying you're compliant, I haven't seen you in a couple of years. Come on, man, <laughs> right? Um, so yeah, we, there's evidence of it. Um, I remember, like you said, during the pandemic, everyone was like super on point about like, you know, health and, and washing and being hygienic and all that stuff. And then two years later, we're kind of just dropping off. I'm going to counterpoint that actually um, and provide some pushback. I've actually seen the opposite. I have seen our patients become more compliant because we're getting them into newer technologies. And generally we're seeing this drive to the middle of part-time contact lens wear. So I, I'm seeing less and less of the I wear my lenses for 30 straight days um, or 30 days and take them out at night. It's more of the, well, I wear them two to three days a week. Um, you know, I don't really wear my monthlies anymore or I'm not wearing them as much. And now is a perfect opportunity to harp on compliance, to continue to talk about eye health and get them into the latest technology that's going to be cost effective and healthy for them. And I think this is the bridge that we have seen in our practice into more daily wearers. I think we've gone up from 30% daily disposable to almost 45% daily disposable in less than two years with really not a whole lot of change um, in that, which is great for us and great for our patients, but it continues to now change the compliance talk because now we have to talk about a new modality. Well, it, so and Michelle, that's before, we, yeah. before we go on to the next question, maybe we could just, uh, um, let the audience know um, that we'll be opening up uh, the Q and A um, portal for people to ask questions of the panelists themselves. So I just wanted to break that in before we uh, go on to another question. But the, we're inviting our audience to also submit um, questions through the portal. Great, thanks, Bill. I appreciate that. So as we um, think about contact lens compliance. And, you know, as Dr. Schaefer said, that transition from a reusable lens into a daily lens changes that conversation quite a bit. Um, but it makes me think about contact lens compliance with wearing schedules and, and contact lens compliance, but also compliance related to contact lens cases. Because one, one modality obviously requires that and the other doesn't. And, and we can see evidence of really strong contact lens compliance, if you will, in the absence of great contact lens case compliance. And so how, tell me what you're seeing in your practices and what you have done to try to get the level of compliance for all parts of the contact lens wearing experience, particularly for those who are not in a daily disposable. How do we get that case compliance where we, where we want it to be? I'll go ahead and start. Um, so I want to follow up on what uh, Dr. Schaefer has said. So for my practice in the last two years, our daily disposable market share has gone up at least five points. We went from low 80s to high 80s. I think it's because um, 
uh, with the mask wearing because it uh, depends on where you are in the country and for those patients who are back to either hospital workplace work wearing mask all day uh, we all know that the dry eye incidence is higher so to be in a premium daily disposable contact lens uh, it's much more comfortable for all day wear and also wearing contact lens with mask is way better than wearing glasses with mask even with the best anti-fog spray so we are seeing increased Increase in our daily disposable modality as well. And as far as the case with for our non-daily disposable contact lens patients, we found something very simple. We tell the patients every time you buy a new bottle solution, change the uh, toothbrush, you know, uh, not toothbrush, change it. So we use toothbrush uh, example, change your contact lens case. So we tell them every time you change your toothbrush, change your contact lens case, like, well, I don't remember the last time we changed. Okay, every time you buy a brand new contact lens solution, a bottle solution, change it to a new case. And we tell our patients, um, depends on if it's a hydrogen peroxide case or if it's a uh, regular multi-purpose solution case, we give them specific time frame of no more than. That's great. Thank you, Bridget. If I could ask maybe a question that kind of came in um, and just a reminder to those people that uh, are in the audience, there's a tab on the bottom that's a Q&A tab that you can submit to questions. One of the questions that came in was, how do I help patients understand the benefits of compliance? Uh, all too often, uh, some, it's a scare tactic. Things could go uh, wrong for you, but there's benefits to compliance. So how do we flip it from talking about a scary thing that happens with non-compliance to a benefit that comes from being compliant. I, I love keeping it positive. I think it's such an important thing for us in the exam room to avoid the doom and gloom sometimes because it can get lost in there. But, you know, talking about how a, how does a fresh lens feel on the eye? And, you know, if you are in a daily disposable, it's a fresh lens every day, but more and the fresher the lens is, the less you overwear that, the better the lens performance is gonna be. So it's gonna give you better vision, better comfort, better clarity as you go through your entire day and into the end of the month, if they're in a monthly lens. So continuing to say the benefits and the value of throwing it away is, okay, now you don't have the degradation of vision that you don't necessarily feel, but will affect you. And you're like, oh, maybe it's time for me to change my contact lenses. If you have to think about it, it's already too late. Any other suggestions from our panelists? How to keep it positive? That was great, uh, Mark. We appreciate that insights. I usually add some bit about longevity that a lot of contact lens patients are acutely aware of the, the benefits that they deliver, as Bridget said, over glasses. And presuming that they want to do this long term, their chances of being able to wear contact lenses for many, many, many years is far greater when we're not having to navigate around complications. So better compliance today could potentially deliver years of highly successful wear. Bridget, you mentioned um, water and contact lenses. And so there's a question that has come in uh, asking the panel to discuss their points of view on cleaning our GPs. Hi, Nicole, I saw your question and thank you, Michelle, for bringing it up. Um, no, that's why I said no water with soft contact lens. So we, we are a specialty contact lens clinic as well. So depends on which type of contact lens we put them in, whether it's a scleral, a regular gas perm, or ortho K, we always include the first uh, either month or first couple months supply of contact lens solution. So we do go through with our specialty contact lens patients how to properly clean with designated cleaner, how to rinse it and how to store it. And we're very clear with those patients that when they do buy the next set, they have to stay with brand specific. They need to, we actually do the research for the patients. For example, um, I'll just use 
my daughter as example, she's an ortho K patient. So we have a brand uh, that we had selected for the patients and we actually tell the patients, uh, so for this particular solution, you can buy at your neighborhood grocery stores or um, uh, pharmacies, and you can even find it at certain, uh, in US we'll have this giant warehouse called Sam's and Costco. So we've done the research for the patients and there's an instruction sheet. Um, we make it very clear that we want patients to use specific cleaner, how to rinse it, what they need to store in, and they need to stay uh, brand specific because we've studied the ingredients of what we want them to use. And if they cannot find it, we give them a list of where they can find it. If they still cannot find it, then they need to call us and we'll help them find it. I think the question is an appropriate one, given that there are still some RGP manufacturers that either don't specifically mention uh, get away from water and some that actually still include it as part of their instructions. So universal recommendations completely agreed upon from our RGP uh, industry constituencies would be helpful. But for all we can do is what we can do. And like Bridget says, I say no water regardless of the contact lens material. Does do the panelists find a, a difference in compliance between those that wear soft lenses and those that wear RGP lenses or scleral lenses? Are, are you seeing something different? And, and if you are, is there something that we can learn there to apply with our soft lens patients? I think in my practice, our, our specialty contact lens patients um, I'm trying to think of the patients who have red eyes that are coming in. I think it's more soft contact lens. I think for my particular practice, our specialty, including just normal RGP patients, tend to be more compliant. And we love those preservative free salings. We actually, we probably should look into retailing them ourselves, but we just tell the patients where to buy them. So I think in general, um, most majority of our red eye patients that are coming in are not, they're more soft contact lens patients than gas farm patients. I'd like to ask a question. We've heard a lot of uh, a discussion about uh, our patients for five, 10, 15 years. And uh, some recent research uh, uh, asking um, kind of contact lens wearers about when they receive their um, compliance training. Uh, most report that they receive it um, on their first visit, uh, but after that, they really don't hear much information about compliance. Um, so a year out, uh, they've been wearing their lenses. What are the things you do in your practice to ensure that uh, whether it's your um, team members uh, or yourselves, reinforcing that uh, compliance one year after you've seen them uh, for that uh, dispensing visit two years, three years. Um, uh, Dr. Shen Lee, I know you talked about email uh, in patients. How often do you email the patients? So it'd be great to get some feedback because we understand what the patients are saying to us that they hear it on the first visit, but they don't hear it later on. What do you do as practitioners to follow up? Yeah, in my practice, nobody gets a free pass. Everyone gets the same speech from me. It literally takes less than a minute to deliver. Um, so at the end of the exam, you know, we go over, hey, best practices for contact lens. Everybody gets it. Uh, I think for, oh, go ahead, Bridget. Thanks, Mark. So same with uh, what Dr. Chu is saying, we review, because I don't even tell them. I just ask my patient, to tell them, okay, do you, do you remember what the contact lens safety rules are? And I just stop and have them tell me. Yeah, so every patient gets it. A new patients get uh, more communications from us. And you reinforce those messages through the email? You, you mentioned following up with email. So the same three easy steps that you talked about, uh, um, are they kind of repetitive in the emails over the course of a year? Uh, no, we don't send that many emails out to the patient. We just send a follow-up email. Um, in the follow-up email, we repeat what the safety rules are. Uh, we have these follow-up emails that we send to different groups of patients. For example, new contact lens wearers, especially pediatric uh, 
uh, patients, actually one of my staff calls the mom or the dad to make sure they're doing well. It's just a patient experience improvement. All of our dry patients get a follow email. All of my specialty needs patients get a follow email because um, we've learned what well, my personally, I prefer email because there's a traceable communication thread because you can always go back and refer to it. So we don't send out as far as contact lens safety emails out to the masses. It's just to the brand new wares, especially the brand new wares who are scleral contact lens, who kids get into contact lens for the first time, uh, kids get into ortho K for the first time, or patients going to uh, a specialty uh, hard contact lens for the first time. But as far as the quick message that's repeated with every patient at every, at a, uh, every visit, because we're huge contact lens practice. And like Jason said, once you get used to saying it, it doesn't take that long. You know, one of the things that we do at our practice that we've been um, found to be very successful was that, is that um, no minor, like my phrase is, every minor is in a daily disposable lens. There is no option. Uh, there is no other option. If the parents fight, push back on it, I would tell them, you know, I strongly believe in this. If your kid wants to get into contact lens, you want your kid to get into contact lenses, they're going in a daily disposable. And if that's an issue because of, pr of price, let's wait, let's hold off. We're gonna give them glasses again, but they don't get, they really don't get an option in our practice. Unless they're, they need to be in the specialty lens, of course. So for us, I think it all starts with the staff. I think our staff is such a vital part of what we do. So on every exam, they ask, how often do you throw away your lenses? And I think it still allows the patient to then think about it. Like Michelle was saying earlier, like it is a thought process now. It's not, do you throw your away your lenses on time, which is a simple yes, no. How often do you throw them away? Now they have to think about it. So now it's in the chart. So now we get to talk about it. So I always follow it back up with, I see you're throwing away your lenses. How often are you throwing them away? And I want to hear them repeat the exact same thing. I worked as a technician before I became a doctor and I would have patients and I would literally ask them, how often do you throw away your lenses? Every two weeks. When the doctor walked in, how often do you throw, how often do you throw away your lenses? Every eight weeks. And I'm sitting there, I'm going, but you, and so I get yelled at because it's wrong in the chart, but now it's a, you still have that connection point. You still have that ability to, to ask the patient because when you ask that open-ended question, you get the response and now you get to ask, well, do you know how often you're supposed to throw away your lens? And most patients that I've found don't really know. They go, I oh, don't two weeks, a month, three, I don't, I don't actually know. And so now you're like, okay, anytime we have a new patient, anytime we fit them in a lens, this is how often you throw them away. So now we've created that education point and really exposed what they don't know. Because when patients don't know what they don't know, that's when they get in trouble, right? So when we don't know what they have no idea what they're walking around with, that's when we get in trouble. So it's really, it's just an easy way to ask, do you know how often you're supposed to throw away your lenses? And then they will tell you, yeah. And then you go, okay, well, why? And now it's a fun conversation. It's not a judgment. It's not coming down from a high horse. It's just a conversation and a relationship that's building. And that is the easiest way to then be like, okay, like let's, let's just do better. Now, Shell, do you like mind if I reflect back on an item that you brought up earlier? And that was RGPs and, and, and soft contact lenses. I think that there are some important differences there that we haven't hit all of. Um, the the day to day challenges of, of overnight wear and excessive wear tend to be worse on the soft side, but everything else is problematic for both types of lenses. Hand washing, uh, problems with dirty cases, um, and and not replacing lenses on good schedules. You know, Jason alluded to the patient who thinks they're compliant, but they they missed their annual exam and came back 48 months after. Well, the same tends to be true with RGP wears. 
we do our best to start bringing up the idea of RGP replacement at the six month exam, hoping that they may get a new lens, if not then, at least at nine, if worst case 12. And then for a specialty lens that requires some ocular health issue, for example, that keeping that patient in that lens is a critical piece, we bring up the idea the, 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 the uh, suggestion that they have a backup pair of specialty lenses in addition to glasses, not just glasses. Yeah, all, all important points because, you know, what we see consistently is um, a lot of things that you're all talking about is a patient who may have missed something along the way, a patient who heard it all and can repeat it back, but still doesn't uh, exhibit the behaviors that we want to see. Um, there's, there's lots of components to it. And, and people who understand the risk, they've been coming to you for years, they understand the risk. And for whatever reasons, even with that appreciation, um, still don't uh, develop consistent habits with, with contact lens compliance or, or case compliance. So it's, it's an ongoing conversation for sure. And, and it's going to require a lot of people in the practice to support it and a lot of different ways to get the message out, whether that's written, email, verbal, and, and other ways. Is, you know, I'm thinking about compliance in healthcare in general. Uh, if you think across the, the, your knowledge base of, of your colleagues in the, in the field, we know healthcare compliance is a challenge for, for, for many professions, certainly not optometry and certainly not just in the contact lens space. Is there something there that you have seen where uh, we can pull from or learn from that has, has um, gone well, an example of something that's going well that maybe we can learn from within the context of what we do every day? Because it's, 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 it is a universal conversation. You guys ever talk to them about um, like general health, preventative health? I always go over the pillars of preventative health. It's um, effective. It's uh, less costly and it's, uh, uh, the outcome is much better for you, less painful. And the three pillars of preventative care is the annual checkup with your doctor, the annual eye exam, and the uh, biannual dental visit. And most of my patients go, I'm pretty good with these. I say, I, I'm just asking to be part of that group. If you take care of all those three on a yearly basis, that's preventative care. And you're not going to have to pay the big ticket item later when something happens and the outcome is much better and less painful. So as we get prepared to, uh, to wrap up tonight, if, if you could only give, if your patients could only remember one thing and hopefully they don't, but if they only could remember one thing, what one thing would you want them to remember about contact lens compliance? Can you narrow it down to one? Well, for me, the most important thing would be to remember these are medical devices sitting on your eyeballs. Great. Thanks, Dr. Tu. You know, I think that we, uh, there's been a huge movement for self-care, right? Like I'm putting that in air quotes because it's such a burgeoning topic, but like compliance is self-care, right? Like this is what we take days off for self-care. We do things on the side for self-care. Being compliant with our contact lens wear is that self-care, is that ability for us to take care of ourselves so that we can see clearly live our lives the way that we want to and not have to think about our contact lenses or our vision when we're watching our you know nephew hit a home run or our daughter walk for the first time you know these are things that we don't have to think about if we're doing everything right so compliance is self-care it's a great perspective dr schaefer thank you So kind of a recurring theme that I heard in uh, the panelist discussions really kind of aligned with uh, the easy way three steps, right? I hear um, a lot of information about think clean. Uh, we talked about a clean contact lens case. We talked about um, washing one's hands, um, cleaning and disinfecting your uh, lenses each time they're removed for the re reusable lens wearers. Um, fresher is better. Right? We talked a lot about uh, the benefits of, of um, replacing the lens on the schedule that you as eye care practitioners um, recommend uh, to them and looking for positive ways to reinforce the benefits of um, replacing the lens um, uh, because it's a fresh lens 
And the research has shown that uh, replacing the lens according to the eye care practitioners and the manufacturer's recommended schedules, that patients have better vision and better comfort when they're replacing it on that, that schedule. And another reoccurring theme that came through was trusting your eye care practitioner. Um, it's very important. We talked about that, the messages that you, you build a long-term relationship with the patients. We heard uh, examples of my patients for 10, 15 years. So it's a long-term relationship. But the contact lens wearers are looking for concise, memorable information. And that really is what led to the easy way program of thinking clean, remember freshers better, and trust your eye doctor. That's great. Thanks, Bill. Before we um, wrap up, I have one more question in the chat, so thank you. The question to the panelists is, anyone used any of the available digital communication platforms, social media, email, website, text, any of those, to help drive home messages that can en encourage compliance? Yeah, we have, we have a dedicated marketing person at our office, and all she does is marketing for us for our practice. And she does a pretty good job with on the social media platforms um, as far as, you know, pushing out messages on a regular basis um, by everything in the practice. And part of that is contact lens um, care and compliance. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. So I am going to go back to our panelists just one more time as we close. And I'd like you to each share just one final brief piece of advice for our attendees tonight. They've given us some great questions to, to talk through, but if you had the, uh, if you remember nothing else from this evening, what would it be? Um, I'd love to hear it. Dr. Tu, I'll start with you. Oh, good, it's gonna be quick. Keep it simple. That's great, thank you. Dr. Schaefer. Get to the why of non-compliance. Dr. Shenley. Put all your patients in the latest premium daily disposable contact lens. Solves a lot of problems. And great for the practice. And Dr. Levens. Wash your hands often and do it well. We all don't do it well. When we watch each other do it, we're actually a little bit sloppy. So do it often and do it well. That's great. Thank you, everyone. A great evening. Well, once again, we encourage you to visit uh, easywayprogram.org to review and download the assets that you can be begin to use tomorrow. If you can't do it yourself or don't have time, it's a perfect opportunity to engage other members of your team. Now, the site even has an easy way knowledge assessment quiz for your office. Score at least 70% on 10 multiple choice questions, and you earn a badge and a certificate of completion. Nothing can be easier than that. So I encourage everyone to complete a brief Zoom survey uh, that will pop up automatically when we're done. It will take less than 90 seconds. We ask you to encourage your colleagues to join the Easy Way effort. And I'd like to thank our visionaries again for making Contact Lens Compliance stick and thank all of you for attending this evening. <laughs>